common question which I hear, um, and I think a lot of students um, have, is when to use that or which, and whether or not you should use commas with them. Um, that or which are both relative pronouns, as I mentioned before, and they set up um, relative clauses where they're going to give more information about some object. Okay, So but more information about some object. Really, in the end, is they, they operate, the relative clause operates something like an adjective. It gives more definition or more nuance to that object. So, if you can, and, and this is a little difficult to follow at first, but um, you really have to go by the sense of the meaning of the sentence and what you're trying to get by. That or which, you could use either one, that or which, are used for what are called restrictive or identifying clauses. <clears throat> if that relative clause really needs to be there to identify what's being spoken about or what's being written about, um, then you can use that or you can use which. And if you're going to use one of these, there are no commas. So if it's a restrictive clause and you really feel you need that to identify what you're talking about, or writing about, then you don't need any commas. And you should be able to use that or which for those restrictive clauses. Um, one way to check if it's really a restrictive clause is see if you can go back and forth between that and which, and if it still makes sense, you probably have a restrictive clause. Then you choose the that or which, um, whichever makes sense to you. Um, so you can use either one with what are called restrictive clauses, and I'll show you one in a moment. Which alone is used for what are called non-restrictive clauses or non-identifying clauses. These are really non-essential. They give extra information. Um, in many cases, it's called a parenthetical remark. It's just a little bit added on. In most cases, when you're writing, you don't use these very often. There's something we use more often in speech to just give a little bit of extra information. So this one doesn't come up as often in writing. This one does. So more often, if you're confused, go with the restrictive clause approach, which means no commas, and you can use that or which. That's more common. If you're confused about it and not sure which way to go, go with no commas and use either that or which. It's a better way to go usually. <clears throat> Less often with the non-restrictive when you're giving non-essential information. It's just an aside. That's all it is. And often these come up in speech more often than they come up in writing. They most certainly do come up in writing, but it's just more often to have the restrictive clauses come up. Let me show you a couple of them to kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. The bicycle that he rode to school was stolen today. Um, the relative clause is that he rode to school. This clause, notice that it has a subject, he, and a verb, rode. So it has a subject and a verb. It is a clause. It could make sense without the clause, without the relative clause. It could be the bicycle was stolen today. But when the writer puts this sentence together, that he rode to school, that identifies the bicycle. It really tells you something essential um, about the meaning of the sentence. Um, the, it probably wouldn't be such an important sentence if he hadn't ridden the bicycle to school. We're not talking about something that happened five years ago. There's something today, and this person has no way of getting home. So it really is restrictive. It identifies the bike, and it is essential to the sentence. And notice, this isn't something where it's clearly logical. Somebody could come along and say, well, you know, the sentence makes sense without it. It's not really that restrictive, and it's not really that much. But You'll see what I mean. This one really does lean towards a restrictive clause because it identifies the bicycle, which one it was. It's not any bicycle, it's the one that he rode to school today. Okay. Watch the second example and it'll become a little bit clearer. <clears throat> the bicycle, which I have seen before, was his only means of transportation. Which I have seen before is a relative clause. This is a relative clause and this is a relative clause which I have seen before, I have seen is a subject and verb. So it's a clause, and notice it can stand without it. The bicycle was his only means of transportation. 
And then you've got to go and look at that relative clause and really, is that essential to the meaning of the sentence? Does this really need to be there? Probably not. It's more something we might say um, for the sake of the other of the listener, but it doesn't necessarily have to be there. It is really a non-restrictive one. So it's just some extra information. I've seen other bicycles. You know, this doesn't really restrict it or really identify it. So it would be considered non-restrictive or non-identifiable, um, this clause is. It would need commas around it. It would need commas on both sides. Um, but I do want to emphasize this is not an area where there's a lot of absolutes. You're going off of your sense of that relative clause. Your sense of, is it restrictive or identifying? Does it really uh, give absolutely essential information? Um, or is it non-essential and non-restrictive? Um, it doesn't really identify, and you could take it out, it doesn't really matter. Um, that's your sense, and in the end, that's your judgment on it. It would tend to be that people would say this one is restrictive and this one is non-restrictive. Um, but I'll tell you right now, I've seen writers go both ways. Um, I've seen some writers tend not to put commas in, some tend to put them in. But the real test for you would be whether or not you can substitute that or which in, and then you probably have a restrictive, okay? So, um, and if you don't think it sounds right to your ear, if really only which makes sense, and that sounds right to your ear, then you probably have a non-restrictive clause. But again, there's a little bit of wiggle room in this. Just do your best with it. I'll tell you right now with this one, um, tend to try to use um, that, and if you can only use which, then go with the commas, okay? Try to use that, but if you can't, go with the which and then use the commas. That's a simpler way to do it. It's not perfect, but this is bad grammar, and we're trying to do what will work best, and most folks are okay with using that whenever you have a restrictive clause or using which whenever you have non-restrictive. Okay? All right, take care.